Hello and welcome to another edition of Draw It and Know It. I'm cartoonist Dan Letha for the ministry Reasons for Hope. And today, this is an art lesson edition, we're going to have a step-by-step how to draw a gecko. For those of you that love that little lizard, this is going to be a fun lesson. So let's get going, but before we do, I have a couple questions for you. Number one, is a smiling gecko a good thing? So watch for the answer to that question as we draw this gecko. And then the last question is, what is the gecko's superpower? Now, the gecko doesn't really have superpowers, but it does something that's pretty amazing. And so I'm going to kind of tongue-in-cheek call it a superpower. Let's watch for that. Watch for that at the end of this video. So let's get drawing. All right, we're going to get our pencil out here, and we're going to start drawing some guidelines. The first thing that we're going to draw is a long and kind of flat oval. So draw a long oval like that. That is the body of our gecko. And this is a particular kind of gecko. This is the, the toke ge uh, gecko. So it's a, a particular species of gecko, very popular as a pet. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit too. So there's uh, the top of the head and then draw that same shape kind of moved uh, a little bit and uh, you got the top jaw and the bottom jaw for this gecko. Then we're going to draw a line here and then another line there. That's the front leg guideline. We're going to do something a little bit different with this back leg. We're, we're going to draw just this one line and we'll fill in the rest of the back leg. So there's the two lines for that back leg. And then uh, we're going to move on to the tail. We can't see the fourth leg because it's behind the head. All right, so that's the, the start, the guideline of the, the tail. We're going to draw two little notches on either side. And then we're going to draw uh, this line to add the thickness to the tail. So that's the one side for the thickness. And then this line for the other side of the thickness of the tail. So that's pretty much the shape of the gecko tail. And then we're going to start... Uh, drawing the thigh area of the back leg um, for the gecko and then the other thigh shape just a, a, a curved line like that indicating the basic shape for that thigh and then the upper arm for this uh, this front leg and then we're going to draw the, the lower part of that front leg there there we go and I'm going to add a little oval for kind of the foot area of, uh, of that front leg. Now we're going to draw uh, kind of another oval here just in that place and then another uh, oval for the circle or for the foot. All right. So yeah, the back leg's a little different shape to it. So. And then we've got the thickness and the foot area for that back leg there. All right, so <clears throat> the legs are uh, fairly put together. Now we're going to draw some guidelines for toes. The gecko has some very interesting toes. We'll talk about those in a little bit. So five toes on each foot. One, five, all right. And then we're going to move up to the head and oh no we're gonna move down to the foot all right I, I decided to uh, to add the thickness to the toes so not only just the guidelines but the the toes and they're a little thicker at the the end of the toes so draw them attached to the foot but uh, when it goes out to the tip of the toe the tip of the toe is a little thicker they almost kind of look like uh, flower petals, but um, not all the way around, just five. And then we'll take care of the toes on this foot. So what is the superpower do you think I'm talking about on the gecko? Anybody know what that might be? All right, we're gonna move on to the eye. The gecko, this gecko is nocturnal. 
And so he stays awake at night time and he does his hunting at night time. So these eyes are kind of big and maybe they, they're helpful for the gecko to see at night time. And then there's kind of an eye ridge. A lot of reptiles have that sort of a thing. So we'll draw another line curving around that eye. And then let's fill in some more details for the mouth, that lower jaw. We're going to add kind of a, a lip there to give some more thickness to the bottom jaw. And then a line across there. That's going to help us ink in the tongue later on. So now that we've sketched in our gecko. I'm going to make the uh, the pencil sketch a little lighter so I can ink over the top of it. So you might want to get out your markers or your ink pens, whatever you're going to use. And I'm going to use some black ink. And I want to ink in a nice thick black line. I'll do the top of the head first. And then the tip of the nose. And then come on down to the the side of the mouth. We're going to stop right there. There's kind of a line right here and then another one right there. There's some skin fold type things that the gecko has. We're only going to draw halfway down the and we're going to draw the tongue in there because the tongue is going to overlap that bottom lip a little bit. All right, and then we're going to finish the bottom jaw on this side. And then we're going to draw some more skin folds, kind of the neck area of the gecko. We'll finish in that other side of the mouth, um, on the other side of the tongue, add some shading for that side, and then just a few lines indicating the inside of the gecko's mouth. All right. And you don't have to draw those lines exactly like mine, but something like that. All right, that eye ridge that uh, we penciled in earlier, and um, now we're going to draw that circle for the eye, that very big eye that this this particular gecko has, the toke gecko. Then that eye ridge, now that's a uh, skin covering right there and then the actual eyeball is that little part that is peeking around the corner right there. Now let's ink in that front leg. All right, Come right around and uh, finish the lower part right there. And now we're just going to follow those pencil lines that we put in earlier for the toes. So uh, again, as I'm doing that, I'm going to ask you that same question. What's that superpower that the gecko, this particular gecko, and some others also have this ability too? That um, is very amazing. God has designed the gecko to be an amazing creature, one of his very amazing animals that uh, we are blessed to observe and they're very beautiful. This one is very beautiful. Now we're inking in the, uh, the back leg. Again, this leg has a, a, pe a peculiar shape to it, so a little bit different, but uh, this breakdown should enable you to draw that back leg. Then ink in those toes. Yeah, we live in a fallen world. Again, Adam and Eve's sin uh, brought death and suffering into this world. And so animals that originally ate plants and there was no death, now they survive by eating and killing and all kinds of other behaviors and things that animals have to do to live in this fallen world and what does this gecko do to live in a fallen world so we're inking in the back leg and that those back toes on this back leg that you can see way back there on the other side and then we're going to ink in the tail it's a very special tail and uh, maybe that tail has something to do with the fallen world that we live in the gecko has an ability there that uh, we'll talk about in a little bit when I'm coloring it in. All right, the eye of the gecko. The pupil is not round like 
lots of uh, other creatures and humans included. The gecko's pupil is is kind of a horizontal slit, and um, so it's very very different looking from ours. And uh, a lot of reptiles have that type of feature on them. All right, adding some more skin folds. This gecko has some very special skin folds that uh, give it a special ability as well. So now that we're done inking, I am going to start coloring this gecko in. The color of this particular gecko is sort of a bluish gray body. And, um, and then you're going to see me later on color in uh, some, it's, they're called red spots, but uh, in the photographs that I've seen, they're more orange, maybe orange yellowish type of spots. All right, the Tokay gecko gets its name from its call. So if you hear a recording of the Tokay gecko making its call, it, it sounds kind of like to, it's saying Tokay. And so that's where its name comes from. It's actually found in South and Southeast Asia. So it's way on the other side of the world, although there are some now in Florida and I think in California too, because some people have had these as pets and then let them go. And so they're an invasive species in the United States as well. And uh, this particular gecko is actually the second largest type of gecko in the world. Uh, the male gets to be up to 16 inches long, and the female about 12 inches long. So pretty large as far as a gecko goes. And again, those are those large eyes uh, for a nocturnal animal that spends its time hunting and looking around for food at nighttime. It has uh, a nose that it uses for smelling and tasting the air, and uh, that helps it hunt down its prey as well. Those teeth, those teeth on the on the gecko, um, are very very sharp. And that smile that we talked about earlier is it a good thing when a gecko is smiling? Well, it might look like it's smiling. In fact, if you've seen pictures of the Tokay gecko, a lot of them have their mouth open. But that's because it's it's a pretty aggressive lizard, and it wants to bite you. And so if it's got its mouth open, looks like it's smiling, it's not actually friendly, it wants to put its chompers in you and make you go away. So is a, is a smiling gecko a good thing? No, it's not. And you, might, you have to be careful when you see them do that. Now, I'm coloring in the shading to make this uh, gecko look rounder. And after I get done with that, I'll put in the spots. Now, let's talk about... Uh, the lifespan of this gecko is about 10 years in captivity and uh, in the wild it's probably a little less than that because there's more things that it could run into trouble and and uh, probably not survive so long versus being a protected pet in someone's home. Um, this gecko has the ability to uh, lay eggs, uh, the female anyway, and it lays two at a time and the funny thing, and this might be kind of a hint to something that it can do, is that it uh, sticks them up on a wall or a crevice or near a hole. And so that's a little bit of a different behavior for an animal, not too normal. Um, it also has these skin folds. Now I drew some, some little details on there for skin folds. And uh, this gecko can use these skin folds to when it's hiding on a tree and uh, it doesn't want to cast a shadow. It can kind of conform itself to that tree with those skin folds, and that helps not make a shadow so that it's harder to find. And uh, the skin that has these dots and the coloration on it right now that I'm uh, painting in right there, it can actually use that for camouflage. So this pattern and coloration is very helpful to make this gecko hide when it doesn't want to be seen. And it actually has an ability, kind of like a chameleon a little bit, in that it can lighten or darken its skin color to help it blend into its background. So that's kind of cool. Now, the, uh, the tail that it has is something that, uh, again, this, this gecko lives in a fallen world 
And so uh, God has designed this gecko uh, to be able to not only lose its tail, there's other animals that can do that too, but this one can actually cast its tail off. And so if there's something chasing it and it wants to get away, it doesn't wait for that animal to pull its tail off. It actually makes it pop off. And, and then that gecko will make its getaway because the tail then is kind of gross. The tail then is kind of twitching around and it's kind of moving around and wiggling around. And so that, that thing that's trying to catch it will look at the tail and think, aha, I got the, I got, oh, where did it go? Ah, now look at what's happening to this gecko. The drawing that I've made is flipping upside down. Why is that? Well, the, the gecko, here's the superpower. The gecko has the ability to stick onto things because of those very specially designed toes. Now, some animals that have toes that might look like that have suction cups. Well, not the case for the gecko. It has tiny hairs on its toes. And so those tiny hairs, actually each hair has the ability to kind of grip onto surfaces. And so a bunch of those hairs give it a lot of gripping power. In fact, this gecko, can could you guess how many pounds it can support? This gecko doesn't weigh that much, but with the hairs that it has, it has the ability to support up to 450 pounds of weight. That is amazing. And so God has made this tiny gecko, it has the ability to crawl up and down walls and walk across the ceiling upside down, and it really has a grip on the, the surfaces that it's walking around on. And so that's the superpower of this particular gecko. Again, God has made some animals with amazing abilities. And so when we see these things, I just praise and worship God for the wonderful creation that he has made. And not only does this gecko have special abilities, but it's a very pretty lizard to look at too. So... Thank you for joining me today on this edition of Draw and Know It and watching me draw this amazing Toke gecko. Join me next time for the next animal. I'll see you later.